a ball match announcement tonight, what would be the problems you'd be watching for immediately, a month, and long term? What would they be? Well, the, the, the first set of problems are uh, related to the fact that the donor, uh, the recipient, has to be prepared for the transplant. And this preparation uh, consists of suppressing the immune system so that the graft can take. Uh, in the process of doing that, uh, the patient receives chemotherapy or chemotherapy and radiation. Uh, this makes the patient extremely vulnerable to infection. So the first uh, risk to the patient uh, during this vulnerable state is infection. Uh, we protect them in, in isolation rooms. Uh, we, we are very uh, careful about uh, cleanliness. Uh, we treat infections expectantly. Uh, so if you have a fever, you get broad uh, spectrum uh, antibiotics. They cover a variety of potential infections and uh, we can usually get the patient through that. Um, the next problem... Of well, that, that period of infection, you worry about how long does that period extend to? Well, the, the type of infections you, you may be vulnerable to change um, uh, during the, the time of transplant. In the first uh, month, it's really ba bacterial infections are the thing that we worry about the most, although these patients remain very vulnerable to viral infections, uh, and viral infections are more difficult to treat. Um, but, but bacterial infections, the usual infections that one might see, uh, staph infections, uh, so-called gram-negative infections with bacteria uh, that reside in the bowel are also a risk. So the first month uh, you're quite vulnerable to bacterial infections as well as viral infections. Um, you also have to contend with the, the consequences of, of the therapy, the chemotherapy and radiation that may be toxic to certain organs. So we're very careful to support uh, those organs uh, carefully during this time period. Uh, then after engraftment, when the bone marrow starts to uh, take, uh, the, the enemy now becomes the immune system of the donor, uh, which in the recipient recognizes the recipient as not being self and may mount a reaction, just uh, as if you were considering the uh, recipient uh, to in fact be a germ, and the immune system of the donor may attack that recipient uh, and we have to immune suppress the new immune system until uh, that immune system takes. How long does that risk, as a major problem, last? Uh, it, 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 we have to suppress patients uh, for six to nine months in, in some settings, longer in others. Uh, so it really depends upon uh, the type of transplant and the relationship of the donor to the recipient. But the rest of the life, you have that potential to the, ma the majority, the vast majority of patients uh, will develop uh, a tolerance uh, so that the, the graft suddenly, uh, over time, uh, recognizes the recipient as, as being compatible. And uh, you can uh, cease to take immune suppressing drugs, usually uh, within a year or sooner after transplant, if it's done from a sibling that's matched. If it's done from an unrelated donor, it may be longer. But the vast majority of donors, as opposed to solid organ transplant, uh, can uh, stop taking immunosuppressing drugs and be perfectly normal. Uh, what we say is that uh, your child is, is, is um, normal enough to play in dirt, uh, meaning your immune system works, uh, it, it fights uh, infection from outside, and your immune system no longer is attacking your own body. If a kid was properly immunized prior to this, does he have concern about his own protection against antibodies later? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, immunizations have to be repeated. Uh, the immune system is, is rather naive, uh, so after a, a period of time, um, a year or two, uh, we re-immunize the patients. Uh, and if that kid was exposed in the beginning, does someone got recently immunized with a live vaccine? Is that a concern? It's, it's, it, is a, it is a concern. Um, Presently, we only have two live vaccines. That's chicken pox and measles mumps rubella. Are they a great concern? Yeah, we, we um, recommend uh, very strongly that if there are younger siblings who are receiving any of those vaccines, uh, that they um, not be in contact uh, with their brother or sister who's been transplanted until they shed that virus. And we certainly don't give live viral vaccines to the patients uh, who've been transplanted until they are fully immune reconstituted uh, so that they don't get uh, disseminated um, chicken pox from a chicken pox vaccine or um, 
measles or, or rubella or mumps. Is there any time of the year that you wouldn't transplant, or, or is it no season? There's no season for transplant, but we do um, check very carefully to see if the patients who are being transplanted have any uh, ongoing respiratory infections. So we do a complete evaluation for the usual respiratory infections, RSV, uh, respiratory syncytial virus, which can cause uh, bronchiolitis uh, in, in, in normal, healthy children, can be a fatal disease in transplant recipients. So we culture them to make sure that they're not harboring any of these viruses before we go to transplant. Um, General, your institution has done many transplants, which is something to be not as true as possible. Yes. How often do you do transplants now? Uh, we do about 25 uh, or so transplants a year, and we've been transplanting uh, at the Children's Hospital since 1999. And. Uh, Around the country, how many places are doing transplants in Bone Marrow? Hundreds. Um, Hundreds? They, 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 I, uh, there are probably uh, worldwide around 15,000 or more um, uh, transplants being done. Uh, and uh, typically there are centers throughout the United States uh, that are doing them. Uh, there are less pediatric centers uh, than there are adult centers, uh, but, but there are in almost every state and, and every big city one or two transplant centers. If a child needed a transplant, how would they go about picking a place that you feel that would be the right place to go? What would you be looking for? I, I think what you want to look for is an experience center, uh, one that has relationship with the National Marrow Donor Program so that uh, you can easily obtain unrelated transplants if you need it, uh, and you want to have a center that's uh, close to home. If you live in the New York metropolitan area, that's a little bit easier. Um, uh, if you live in the, in, the, in the far west, that's not so easy. Uh, the patients need a lot of support, uh, so you want to find an excellent center that can provide support for the patient as well as the family uh, that's as close to home as possible so that uh, working parents uh, and parents with other children can take care of their children. But I think what you're really looking for are excellent, highly experienced clinicians um, with excellent and highly experienced staffs. Uh, the doctors only can do so much. Um, one of the key aspects of transplant it's a big team is, approach in oh, is, is the, the nursing care, uh, the psychological support uh, that has to be given, and, uh, and, and uh, child life, uh, the, the, the people who uh, do therapeutic and recreational play with the children. Uh, because they're um, isolated uh, in, in, in a hospital room uh, for a month or more uh, and, and need to be nurtured during that time period. It's, it can be a very difficult and lonely time for, uh, uh, for children. So the psychological support is key, excellent diligent nursing is key, and experienced staff is, is the key to this. You, you don't want um, novices uh, doing these transplants. You need an experienced director, you need experienced staff. So if the teacher is probably as good as the team. Uh, exactly. The, the, the technology is available to anybody who wants to avail themselves of it, um, but you need to know how to do it. Thank you very much. You're welcome.